Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to talk briefly about uh, comments somebody had left on uh, one of my videos. It might have been the older video about installing Linux on a persistent drive, or maybe it was one of the videos where we were talking about ways to try Linux out. It was going to be one of those two videos. And the comment that was left uh, mentioned, yes, you should say something about the fact that flash drives have a limited read-write cycles. And I wanted to address that because that is an absolutely true point. So let's go ahead and talk about that. First and foremost, what are we talking about? Well, the difference between installing Linux on a USB drive and writing a live key with a persistent storage are two different things. When you do a live key with persistent storage, this type of setup does not cause a lot of read-write cycles. So that system is going to last quite a bit longer. The only thing that might have issues is the fact that you have one portion, which is a read-write system in the persistent files. But when you install Linux on any drive, in fact, when you install any operating system on any given computer, the computer itself is going to do a lot of caching, writing files, rewriting files, some things that are always operating when the operating system is running in the background. And when you use a flash drive, flash drives do indeed have weaker storage than your old spinning rust. In fact, SSDs have the same problem. This is one of the challenges and why I don't always use SSDs for the operating system as much. It's still a debate in the field, but the point is true. You can take any USB flash drive, like this little probably 32 gigabyte SanDisk drive, you can pop this guy into your system and you can install a full-fledged Linux operating system on this. You can carry this guy around with you, plug it into any computer that you can boot off the USB drive and boot into your exact operating system, your exact settings, your exact files. I do this quite a bit. I actually have uh, a lot of internal documents on my publishing company is on one of these. I have a whole banking computer, which is based on that premise. I had, at one point in time, I was running cubes on one of these guys. Uh, I keep, well, Tails is not an install, uh, but it did have a Tails. That's more of a, more of a, a live persistent type system. But when you're installing Linux on these, they will wear down. So if you are using a daily driver on a little USB drive like this, then you're going to probably only get about one to two years of life out of this if you're using it regularly. Uh, in fact, I think this is one of the ones I was using as tests about five years ago, and it stopped being stable enough to do that. Now I just use them for uh, non-important data storage. Um, and so they will burn out over time. So the commenter is right. So what do you do about this? Well, if you want to use Linux and install onto, a, uh, onto an external drive, you should instead pick up an external hard drive. These guys are not going to be as limited in the read-write cycles. And I would prefer the old spinning rust ones. These ones here, this is, a, I think, a one terabyte. And they're down to like 40 bucks or something. These guys here will last a long, long, long time. So you just kind of plug this guy into your system, and this can be your entire operating system. Sure, it's not as small as a little flash drive, but it will actually do the job and get the job done. So if you are looking at using Linux without destroying your main computer, so you want to keep your Windows running in the background, but you want to do Linux for all the things you can do Linux on, uh, entertainment and, you know, touching up the family photos and email and social media. Uh, you can do that on Windows. They're all spying together, you know. They'll spy on each other, I, guess. I don't know. But uh, all of those things that you do not have to use a Windows or Mac for, you can install Linux. And if you install it on one of these guys here, you set your computer up in the BIOS to first boot off a USB drive and then boot off the main hard drive. Anytime you want to boot into your Linux system, you just plug this guy right on in. Boot up your system, it's going to flawlessly move into Linux, and this thing will last forever. It will probably outlive your computer. Then you, when your computer dies, you just take this guy out, plug in the next computer you buy, and boom, you haven't even changed anything. And then when you want to go back into your old Windows uh, or Mac build, you simply unplug it from the system, hit the power button, and now you will have the ability to boot into your 
existing operating system. So the commenter is completely right and is worth saying that yes, the flash drives do have a limited read-write cycle. If you are going to be using Linux long-term daily driver on an external device, definitely buy an external hard drive instead. It's going to last a lot longer and you'll probably get better speeds out of it as well. Um, even the USB 3 drives I have found Particularly lately, the quality has dropped. I've had a hard time finding some that are really good and really stable in the long run. I've, some of my older drives are still existing, but the newer ones that I bought, I've had a hard time finding ones that actually work as well uh, as they have. But these external hard drives, they work flawlessly in nearly every situation. You can encrypt them so if somebody walks off with it or you leave it somewhere, nobody can get into your uh, into your drive or into your files. But these really are those principles that are important to keep in mind is that you can use Linux in a variety of different ways. And the external hard drive is actually the main media PC, which I've used for media stuff for nearly five years. I really only started using the internal hard drive on that a year and a half ago. Prior to that, I was running that off of this. Um, Ubuntu, Manjaro, um, I did a Linux Mint over there, a lot of different things. So while I did use the flash drives, and they're great for doing some system testing and stuff like that, they are really good at that. But you're going to have a lot better long-term run if you're using the external hard drive, assuming you do not want to overwrite the hard drive that is on your computer already. And I realize some of you may not do that. So hopefully this little tip has helped you out in understanding how you can install Linux and what devices you want to use. If you are going to use a flash drive, make sure you are getting a USB 3.0 or 3.1 or greater newer technology drives. Do not use a super cheap USB 2.0 drive. You're not going to get the read write speeds you need to, to run an operating system. So those are those. Thank you for the uh, commenter who had mentioned that yes, they do have a limited read-write speed because I think I did not mention that, at least not uh, not as a focus on the previous videos. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know how else we can help you in switching to Linux. Have a look over at the support pages, switch to linux.com slash support, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.